Don't you escape scrutiny, Nathan. What's your favourite pizza? What do you order? I'm a Hawaiian, mate. Really? Ham and pineapple, yeah. Yeah? Every yeah. time? Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of pizza, but when I do... Oh, pineapple, yes or no, it's a big, it's a big talking point, isn't it? Belong, does it belong on pizza? I don't know. Do you have, have you had pizza and beer just during some of your struggles of recent times? What have you done um, to try and mix it up, seriously? Yeah, well, when I'm really, really flat, I grab a pizza and a beer and it makes me feel better. <laughs> have you brought the, have you brought the there group was together? Sat, there was a function Saturday yeah, night? Yeah, we, once again, we had, a, we had an organised... Uh, we had an eight-day break, so we've had a, a couple of a bit of travel and a couple of six-day breaks. So, um, yeah, we, I think most clubs would generally put intermittent social events in and, and this was an opportunity for us. So it was in, win, lose or draw, and... No, it's just a good opportunity, once again, have a, have a few quiet ones and catch up socially and, um, yeah, and, and connect outside of the footy club. What, what's the value of it, do you think, especially in warding off the, the outside sense of negativity? Um, well, the value of it is that you actually you spend time together as, as mates, as, as humans, you know, and, and you get to you know, catch up with the partners and, um, and the coaches and players are... Um, um, interacting in an environment away from the football club and the football club is a safe place for us we we look after one another and um, you know it's it's it, it, there's respite in our in our organization and in our in at the Holden Center away from um, any of the um, I suppose the topics of the of the week whatever they are whether they're good or bad um, but yeah when you get away and you have a social occasion it's it's just a good opportunity in terms of the injury list, Nathan, that you're now presented with, how significant is the challenge? Is it as significant? You've seen injuries, you've seen them yep. constantly. Um, it feels like you're not going to have a whole lot of wiggle room at selection this week. Oh, look, you know, it is what it is. The, um, you can't um, it's wish it away or, um, or hope it to be different. Um, you know, we, we, we actually, I mean, we've, we'd lost a few, you know, with knees and, and hips and a few shoulders. Um, lost a few boys in, in um, I suppose, uh, unconventional circumstances in, in Stevenson um, and Beamsy, who, um, you know, are very, you know, real and significant and public issues. Um, but, yeah, a few, a few soft tissue um, injuries in the last two or three weeks, which um, has probably, you know, magnified our injury situation. But... Um, now we uh, we've prided ourselves on being able to buffer that and being able to play together as a unit um, and execute the brand of footy that we believe in. So we don't see injuries as an excuse, but there's plenty that we can do better um, to play together um, and to bring uh, our best football to light. You know, we're, we're not in form at the moment, and we're looking for small wins, and we're coaching um, to that endeavour. To, um, to have our players you know, see the opportunity that's in front of them in the next month, just as Don spoke about the Adelaide Crows. Is that all... all you're not going to give um, injuries an excuse. I think most people in football would give that out. But that said, is there parts of the way you and your, and your, and your coaching group are, are coaching and, and have introduced this year mm. that haven't worked? For example, early in the year, slow ball movement. Collingwood People used to look at Collingwood Bucks and go, wow, have a look at this. Mm. This is really exciting. I think that a lot of the top teams, including the Pies, have really slowed that down. Has, has that been a, the right decision for, for your group or not? Um, I think round two was highlighted against Richmond when we took out something like 170 marks. They in were the folded game. right back, didn't but, they? Um, well, that was a little bit of what we were doing, a little bit of what they were doing. And, and the highlight in how quickly things can change is Richmond are defending almost altogether differently. Uh, now than they were from in round, round two round to two. round. Can yeah. you tell us how? Well, they're um, they're holding their back six intact a lot more rather than pressing um, right on the ball side. So, um, and and that I think in some part, you know, um, Dimmer spoke about it in some part due to the way that we move the ball in round two and and the adjustment they've made since. So I think what we sometimes forget is the season is actually a process of evolution for the clubs as well as it is for for the game. And when you say some things that we've done from a coaching perspective that may or may not have worked, ultimately you either, you either progress and you stand up in the competition and there's some sides that, that are, that are in, still in finals calculations but not in the eight that are actually got 
that look like they're they're in great better form and have greater momentum mm. than say say us for instance yep. in the, in the um, in the top eight. So, but there's still a month of football to go, and some sides will come off, and some sides will pick up, and you know we hope to be one of those sides that picks up, and we'll continue to do the work to look for that. Uh, when you when you're in the doldrums like you are at the moment with injuries, is it about hard work and sticking to what you know on the process, or does it require you as coach? which Stuart just asked, to, to come up with ways to, to prick your team. Like, just for example, I wrote this morning about Steel Sidebottom. A great player, a great mm. player. Become sort of, tell me if I'm wrong, a defensive half midfielder is a sweeper, not playing as much forward, beautiful kick as a knife for, you know, moving the ball. Mm. Do you start looking at pulling sort of major levers on, on positional play rather than method of playing? Oh, look, I think if um, anyone that's watched us in the last four to six weeks has seen quite a few shifts in, in positional changes and, and some of that has been due to um, um, the makeup of the squad that's available to select and some of it has been due to trying to prop up different parts of our game that, that may, may or may not have been working well enough. So, yeah, we've, um, we've made slight shifts and, and tinkered and, and adjusted and at times um, you know, moved players from front to back, back to front, um, changed roles around, looking for a formula that we think can take us forward. There's no use us just limping into fine. Like we're, we're here to contend as best we possibly can. Despite anything that is, is standing between us and, and that, we are here to find our best football in the next month, we want to find a competitive advantage, a little bit of momentum and a little bit of belief that will give us a chance to beat the best sides when we get, if we get, to September. Because we still need to qualify and we, need to, we want to qualify as well as we can. And not only that, we want to be playing the type of footy that gives us a chance to win finals. Tell so, us we're, that's that, so they're the decisions listen, that we're making. Tell us about the conference, just very quickly. We've got to go on that break. The game, Richmond Collingwood. Everyone's saying, "Oh, the scoreboard flattered Collingwood," and a couple of times the Tigers kicked some wowee goals and made fools of the opposition. Just happened to be Richmond this week. They were cleaning with the ball, and you, you after the game, we're, we're pretty bullish mm. about the performance. Exactly why? What, what, what was the one area that, that they didn't give? It, they didn't give up. Yeah, well, that's, that's the main one. That's the so main you're one. For, you're looking for small wins. We were out pressured early in the game. There was nine goals to one. Yep with three minutes to go in the second quarter, and our playing group had a choice. Are we going to hoist the white flag or are we going to fight this out? And for, for a large part, I've got to give our, our players credit, they, they work. Yeah, our, our GPS is high, our, our endeavour and our willingness to work in the game is still really high, which is really encouraging. So it comes back to the coaches to be able to direct that work ethic and that want in the right manner. Um, to be able to find some um, some some gelling in our offense as much as anything, which which enables us to maintain shape in defense. Now, a contest, it's all it's all the same. Everyone talks the same language. Everyone's looking for the same thing. We're just we're just not finding. It. And we were beaten by a side that everyone thought was going to beat us because they're probably the best perform with with Brisbane, probably the best performed side in the competition at the moment. Um, and they were as good as we've played this year. Um, and we didn't handle it in the first half, but we were able to battle away in the second. Good. Um, the score of you, so the one we just saw, the Zaharakis kick touch well behind the line, back into play. Play on is called. Not too long after it's discovered that was a goal. Next year, if there's the capacity to stop the game and pay the goal, where are you in the, in the debate of leave it be or intervene, Nathan? Um, just get it right the first time. Um, if the, if the game is called play on, it's, they're, they're very tough ones. If, um, if we understand that every goal is reviewed, so does that mean that every non-goal needs to be reviewed as well? Now that bounces right down the other end and a goal's kicked and then, you, and then you have to try and call it back and say, hey, that was a goal. Well, where do you go? Where do you go from there? I think that's a, that's a really tough one. You so live gotta, with it? You just gotta, yeah, I think you have to live with it and I, and I just think you need to get it right there. Don, what's your view? Yeah, probably the same. I think it is one of those ones where it's it's sort of a bit of rubber the green stuff, and unfortunately the the technology now allows us to go back and check all these things, which you know, probably time gone before they, you wouldn't have known. It would have just been that was pretty close and play on happened. So yeah, you've either got to get it right or at the first time, or you just got to go play on. And where the game is stopped, so Adelaide Oval Saturday night, 
um, erroneously a behind has paid, the game is stopped and then it goes to a ball up. So this ball is on the way out from port when it's all hauled back. The score ends up being right and in a one-point game, um, I'm less inclined on the criticism of this one. Mm. Because if that point stands, we're at a draw and it should never have been paid. Oh, I think Don makes, makes a, um, a really good point, and that is, doesn't the whole ball need to be over? Mm. So the goal umpire's called a behind, oh, that changes and it, then yeah. it's been scrapped yeah, quite okay. correctly. Well, look, uh, we are more aware of mistakes. We focus so much more on what doesn't work and what isn't working than we ever have before because we use the... Um, yeah, the broadcasters are, you know, you see more games of footy than you ever did. It's analysed within an inch of its life. Um, there's, you know, we spoke about, if we spoke about all the good stuff, it would get boring. So we've got to speak about the, the stuff that's not working. It's far more critical, far more enjoying. The scoring does engaging. matter in the game. Though. Oh, it, absolutely it does. But you, well, there has always been games that have been decided on errors of some sort, mainly player error. Occasionally a coaching error and um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and 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 umpires as well. So that that's a very human thing to happen. And now we want to be perfect. Yeah, am good, I confused? Good luck with that. Am I confused, or should I be confused about Jordan Ruffy on 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 Friday night? What what happened to him? And well, how he, long was he off the ground? No, he see he came off late in the second and was um, with concussion. Yeah. Sim yeah, Tennis. which he, I think he copped a ball in the head towards the end of the first oh, quarter. Oh, yeah, that would have hurt, yes, yes. And, uh, I know that a few of our boys today had a, um, a conversation. There was one bit of play where he got handballed the ball, he fumbled it, and then uh, Sydney Stack kicked a goal, and the conversation went to Braden Maynard, and he said, what happened then? He goes, well, you, you, dropped, you dropped the ball, mate, and we got a goal kicked against us. He goes, oh, I can't even remember it. So, and then Braden needed to tell, told him, you go off and get get checked by the doctors. So this goes, is Don't you talk. tell me what to do. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. And then when Braden went off about sort of seven or eight minutes later, said, you better go and check Ruffy. And that's when they grabbed him off and did the did a concussion, it made a delayed concussion of some sort. But Tom Lynch played, br like, brilliantly, but Ruffy wasn't there for the second quarter. How did he stay on the park? How did he get away well, with he it? He stayed upright and... I mean, it doesn't, well, the runner it doesn't look like the most sort of lithe... Bouncy, <laughs> bouncy type of player at the best of times. Would the runner have been able to pick that up if you had the runners? I'm being serious here. Uh, yeah, good point. I wouldn't have thought of that. Maybe it would have been something that we would have been able to go and check directly. Mm. But there was actually there was a couple of goals kicked, but the way it happened is one of our defenders needed to rotate. That had had a conversation. So Braden Maynard had rotated off and had the conversation. Said, so go and check out there, Ruffy because I don't reckon he's all there. And that was like seven or eight minutes after he was he aware. He didn't know of where he was. Yeah, amazing. So maybe there, there was, maybe there is a bit in that. Yeah.